Welcome back Technoids, Elric Ferris here once again on the Motherboards.org YouTube channel to bring you guys the unboxing and full review of the MSI Z77A-GD55 motherboards. Now MSI has three of these motherboards that are actually in their stack. They have their motherboard that's the 45, the 55, and the 65. The one that we're looking at today comes into mark about $169 to $179, features a click UEFI BIOS, and all kinds of features that are generally geared towards MSI products so that said let's first hop in look at the box see what comes in the box take a look at the motherboard and then let's see the performance of the thing and in the end just talk about it all in one final little bundle see you guys in the review All right, folks, since we're doing things a little bit different, we're going to show you the outside of the box, the inside of the box, then go on with all the features. I won't spend too much time going over stuff in the box, but you guys see the front of it, flip it around the back, because in the back is actually there's a lot more features. You guys can see this is the Z77A GD55. This is the middle of the line board for the people over there. Now, they have their Dr. Moss 2, which is basically their thermal power and their thermal efficiency, keeps the system running cool and quiet. They use high C caps, which are highly conducted polymerized capacitors. Their super ferrite choke, which has 10% higher power efficiency, better overclocking and power stability, and finally their solid capacitors. Non-volatile, low ESR, low temperature. Basically guaranteed to keep your motherboard running for 10 years. Next up, we see the OC Genie 2. It says overclock in one second. Basically, you just hit a button and it automatically overclocks your system to a pretty stable default, probably around somewhere around 4.3 for most CPUs. We've got their instant OC. You see again their rich features, their supercharger. Now, what this does allows you to plug in your USB 3.0 devices and such and charge them up. They also have their Winky 3 to surf the internet, chat with friends, maintain HDD data, and edit docs and photos with any OSI, Winky 3. Last but not least, we see the THX True Audio Pro. And then lastly, we see a little IO overview, which shows you the rear IO of the board. Now, over here on the other side, we see they claim it's the world's first PCI Express Gen 3 mainboard brand. That I got to call BS on that. Basically, when all these motherboards came out, they were all the same thing. That's just a marketing pitch. Now let's jump in. Let's check out the content and then move on to the features of the motherboard. Right off the bat, we're going to see these guys have a certificate of quality and stability. Kind of funny to see a motherboard like that, but with their military class 3 hardware, they give you a certification claiming and stating that this motherboard is high quality. Moving on past that, we have the military class 2 once again standing out. This is the software application guide. This shows you how to use their motherboard and the different stuff on it. Moving past there, we have the actual user's guide and manual itself for the Z77A GD55. Next up, we have the rear I.O. Here you can see the rear I.O. is clearly marked, showing you where to hook your stuff up. Next up, we have the quick connect. These actually allow you to push these into the pins in your motherboard and then taking the wiring from your case, you connect those right to these and it's much easier to see. Then we have two SATA 3 cables. You can notice these by the white ends on them. And then last but not least, we have the installation CD. My motherboard was a beta, so I have a little beta CD. Now let's take a look at the motherboard itself. This is a standard size ATX motherboard. It'll fit in any mid-sized tower or larger case. You guys can see that as far as the cooling of the motherboard goes, everything is passive. There are no moving fans or anything else. We'll start up at the top. We see the number one has the OC Genie 2. The one to the left of that, Military Class 3. And then finally located at the bottom of the board is the other MSI one with its logo. These are all the passive cooling on the motherboard. Now, as far as the power goes, you can see right up here on the top, we have the first 8-pin power connector. Then over here for the far right, we see the 24 pin power connector. This motherboard uses the LGA 1155 chipset and around the chipset, you can see all the super ferrite chokes. Those are all relevant right around there. There's also plenty of room around the ZIF area for you to install an aftermarket cooler. Then to the right of that, we see the memory. You can see these are color coded. This motherboard can use up to 32 gigabytes of GDR3 memory and overclock mode up to 2667 megahertz. Pretty cool stuff. Now let's take a look at the fan headers. Very important to any motherboard because these regulate your cooling and your cooling fans. Now up above and to the right of the ZIF socket, we can see the first two. Then down by a 24 pin power, we see the third. At the bottom of the board, underneath the standard PCIe slot, we see a fourth. And the fifth is right located below 
the zip socket that you can see right here as well. Now you guys are always wondering what do those little buttons do? What do those little buttons do? Well, those little buttons do a couple different things. One of them is the OC Genie 2 button, which means it basically you want to do that overclocking. You hit that button. The board goes through a bunch of little stages. It determines where it can overclock safely and then it'll boot and be in that overclocked state. You also have your power and your reset located there as well. Now, as we continue to go down the board, we're going to see something really neat right here in front of the 24 pin power connector. For you overclocking freaks out there, you're going to really like this. This is a V core point. This is where you connect your voltage connector to the motherboard and you can check out your voltage settings directly through your multimeter. Pretty cool stuff. Now let's bounce over to the other side of the board and let's check out the PCI connections. Now, there are some things about this that I'm really not happy about, and this is where my major gripes about the motherboard begin. Now, there are four PCIe 1X slots. You can see the first one, it's located very close. I mean, very, very close to the rear IO and the military class two labeled passive cooling thing. Now, the other two are located in between the number one and number two PCIe 16X slot, which means if you run any type of SLI or crossfire configuration, those two connections are gonna be completely worthless. Now, the last one located right above the standard PCI connection, and that's a very good location for this one, but the other ones are all in a really weird location. I'm not very happy with that. So in total, there are four 1X PCIe slots, two PCIe 3.0 16X slots, and a single PCIe 2.0 16X slot. Now as we bounce back across the board, let's take a look at the SATA and extender slots. Right off the bat, we see a little blue connection right here. This is the USB 3.0 connection. Now some of the boards come out of the breakout box. This one did not, but many cases actually include that connection so you can use those on your case. Next up to that, we have the first of the Intel SATA connections. The first one that we're taking a look at here, these are the new SATA 3 or 6 gigabit a second connections. The two black ones to the left of that are the old school SATA 2. As we move along down the motherboard, you can see next to the SATA connections that there was actually room to place another connector there. This would have been for either a Marvel chipset or something like that to give you even more SATA connectivity. As we spin around to the bottom of the board, we see that we have three USB 2.0 headers. As we move past that, we have all the connections for hooking up to your case. These can be used in connection with those quick connects we showed you earlier when we showed you the contents of the box. Then once again, we're come across the fan header. And one thing to note, it's really hard to see, but in front of every single one of the fan connectors, there actually is a little tiny ESD chip inside there as well. This helps for electrostatic discharge. Many times in the past, when you plugged USB devices in or you plug things into the motherboard, you remove them, it would short the motherboard out. Most of the new current motherboards that are high quality actually have this ESD protection. And you can see that little tiny chip in front of there gives the same protection to this board. Now we're gonna flip it around. You can see this board has the sound chip and uses THX audio. And now last but not least, let's check out the rear IO. Now, the rear IO is pretty cool, but there are certain things about it that I don't like. Being that this is a new Intel Ivy Bridge motherboard, supports all the latest Ivy Bridge processors and all that, you would think there would be a DisplayPort connector, but there is no DisplayPort on this motherboard whatsoever. There is a standard VGA, which meets this like criteria for all the Asian countries that use old school stuff, but nothing for the countries that want to use DisplayPort. You can see the far left, we start out, we have both a legacy keyboard and mouse port. Underneath that, we have two USB 2.0 ports. Right next to that, you can see a little button, which is the clear CMOS button. Then we have the coaxial and digital audio outputs. Another two USB 2.0 ports. The HDMI port the Intel LAN. Now this is actually a pretty good feature. They didn't go cheap and use a Realtek. They actually use the Intel chip for the LAN. That's actually a pretty good feature. Below that, we have two USB 3.0 connections. Then we have the VGA, the DVI, and then all of our analog sound connections. That said, folks, if you guys like the color scheme, you guys can see this motherboard features the blue and black colors. A lot of people like that color scheme. If you're one of those people, you're gonna like it. Like we said in the very beginning, it's a standard size ATX motherboard. It'll fit in any standard size case or larger. Now let's jump in. Let's check out the benchmarks. And at the end of the day, see how this motherboard compares to the rest.
guys saw everything in it. Now, first I'm gonna talk about the negative things about the motherboard. The first of all, I do not like the placement of the PCIe One X slots. One's too close to the rear I.O., the other two are in between your slots. You're going to use SLI or Crossfire, and the other one's down in a good slot. So I think the first three of those are kind of just in bad positioning. And also, the rear I.O., I feel if you're using an Ivy Bridge motherboard, you should have a display port. Now, that's just one of the things I feel. But beyond that, there's really nothing disadvantageous to the board. I mean, it runs fine. It overclocks okay. It's just not really geared for the extreme anything. It's a very middle line motherboard. Like I said in the intro, it uses a Click UAF BIOS. Now, this BIOS is pretty good. Both Gigabyte and the people at ASUS also have similar BIOSes. I feel that ASUS is in the top. MSI, they're kind of battling it out with Gigabyte for second place, but it's a pretty good BIOS. Overclocking, as I said, is okay. The features are all there. It's just not like using some of the really extreme boards that you're gonna see, nor is it priced that way. So if you just need a board that has solid functionality, you don't need a whole lot of USB 3.0 ports, then this might be a board you might wanna look at. Most people out there don't use more than one video card. Some people use two. If you're looking for something extreme with three or more, this is not your board. For general usage, general overclocking, and just a solid, simple system, the MSI Z77A-GD55 is a solid board and a hot product here at motherboards.org.